we have. Option one, get strong and resilient. That is hip raises, three sets of six, or trap bar deadlifts, one set of 15, add weights, one set of 10, add weights, one set of eight. Then right over to step ups, eight on each leg, and hollow body end rage hold to overhead press. Ugh, what a ridiculously long name. Uh, we will go over what that is. So you have your hip raises. Remember with your clients, if you have people that have lower back issues, yet you are trying to engage their hamstrings and you've already done the cat slides and you've done the TRX slides and you've done glute ham raises, so they've got everything locked in, you can always start your hip raises with an easy start on the floor. It's less range of motion, but two fixed points, it's much safer. Or if you have people that have just fine lower backs, Start on the bench, get those shoulders on, lock in the upper body, lock in the legs, rotate up and back. Bam! Hamstrings and butt. Or don't do both. I mean, you could do both, but it's a level of self hate that is, frankly, terrifying. Fifteen, two, step ups. Remember with your step ups, stay stable, bam, push through. Eight on each leg, two, oh, I messed up. It happens. Hollow body end range hold presses. Now this is new, so take a look at the tutorial exercise as well for uh, an overview on there. Now, you can use any weights, doesn't matter. You can use a single to make things more stable and easy for people. You can use double to make things a little bit harder for the upper body. Um, kettlebells, dumbbells, weights. Dealer's choice, really. But what you're going to do, and this is probably one of the harder ones because you have to stabilize your wrist through the motion. It's kind of needlessly complicated. So needlessly complicated, the question is why do it? The answer is don't fucking do it. If you can be simple and smart and effective, do all three. Hollow body hold. Extend the end range. Okay, this is, this is where I'm comfortable. This is where I'm not going to break down the back. And then push the weight. Control just at this pace. Now, with this one, I would probably need a 20, 25 kilo weight. Maybe more. What that's doing is it's increasing the the pressure on your lever angle, which is putting more pressure into the core. So you don't actually have to do any movement through your abs to make this much harder on your abs. They have to work harder to stabilize and hold the position. It's a very effective exercise, especially for people that have any lower back issues and need to overload a ab motion. So that is our get strong and resilient option.